This Let's Edit with Media Composer tutorial is brought to you by Video Guys, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for over 25 years. And by Boris FX, the leading developer of visual effects plugins, titling, motion tracking, and workflow tools for broadcast, post-production, and film professionals. And by Assimilate Inc., makers of Scratch, the number one choice of professionals for complete dailies and larger than HD finishing workflows. Scratch, amazingly creative, incredibly fast. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Let's Edit with Avid Media Composer tutorial. And in this lesson, I am very excited to talk about the new 2020 update to Boris FX's Sapphire plugin pack for Avid Media Composer. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at the new free lens effect as well as getting in and talking about the integrated mocha tracking that's now available across certain effects inside this package. All right, so as you can see, we are in Avid Media Composer. This is the current version as of this recording, 2019.11. And if you take a look at what I did to create the opening look, was I took three presets and I basically butt-ended them together with a dissolve in between the last two presets to give us this very cool look. And I like the fact that with Freelens, we can even just cut to just a regular, very subtle version of Freelens to create a very cool, almost transition-like effect. Now, I should talk a little bit about what exactly free lensing or lens whacking, as it's also referred to, actually is. So what I need you to do is I need you to think of yourself holding a camera in your hand, the body of the camera in your right hand, the lens in the left hand. Now, you know how you take picture video. You hold it up to your eye, you look down the lens, take the picture, okay, or start recording the video. Well, now what I want you to think of is what would happen if you disconnected the lens from the body of the camera and instead of having it physically connected, you were actually holding it up to the body of the camera. Well, keep in mind, your hand's going to shake a little bit, which is going to cause a little bit of light to leak in. You're going to get some shake as well. You'll get some motion blur. And you're going to get some distortion happening. Well, that's what free lensing or lens whacking actually is. Now, obviously, the downside to shooting it like that in the field is you're stuck with that result that you bring back to the edit suite or into the you know compositing station. Whereas by getting in and working with Sapphire 2020's free lens effect, we can add those parameters or that look after the fact. All right. What I want to do here is just call up the empty canvas here of our giraffe walking across the screen. And let's hit Command or Control in 8 to call up the effects palette. I'm just going to make sure that it is tabbed over here. Perfect. I'm going to come up here. I'm just going to type in free. You'll see there is free lens, part of Sapphire's blur and sharpen category. I'm just going to take it, drag it, and drop it down onto my footage. I can now close the effects palette. I'm going to step into effects mode, shift and Y. If you don't have it mapped, don't worry. You can always find it right here at the top of the timeline. I now have the effects editor tabbed over here with the bins. And what I'm going to do for right now is just bypass the effect for one second. What I normally like to do, especially with the effects that are like free lens and even the you know lens flare effect and the glow effect, is I always like to start out by jumping into the effects browser to get an idea of some cool starting points for the effect. So what we can do is simply come over here to load preset. And inside of the preset browser, you'll see that we have a few presets to start with. I like the fact that it goes from subtle, a little bit unsteady, to a little bit uh, light leaky, a little bit discreet. Then we even get all the way down to the super jumpy. Now, I don't want to start out by loading a preset, but I did just want to bring this to your attention to keep in mind that that's always a good way to start out with new effects, whether you're working inside of Sapphire or even working inside of Continuum. Now, what I want to draw your attention to here is I'm just going to twirl up all the parameters here is the parameters that we do have at our disposal. We have the ability to get in and work with the lens manipulation, defocus, distortion, light leaks, shake, and vignette. Now, I'm just going to turn all of these off except for light leaks. All right, perfect. Now, before I get in and talk about light leaks, I want to draw your attention to the widget in the middle of the screen. And what I want to do is just grab the center point of that widget and start dragging over here to the left a little bit. Now, you'll notice that as I drag, not only is the image being shifted because we're obviously manipulating the lens, but we're actually also getting a lot more light leak happening here as well. 
Okay, now I think that's actually a good place just to take a little bit of a sidestep and backtrack for one quick second because you'll remember in the introduction, I talked about exactly what free lensing was or lens whacking, which is you have the body of the camera, you have the lens of the camera, you put the two of them together, you're trying to hold them. And what's actually happening is that the manipulation of the lens is what is impacting parameters like light leak, like vignette. Basically, as the lens is being manipulated or distorted, those parameters or those basically in-camera effects are being adjusted as the lens is being adjusted. So what makes this effect unique is not the fact that we could probably get in and build something like this inside a builder, having a vignette, having the shake parameter, having the light leak. But what's very, very cool about this effect is that if you come over here and take a look, the lens manipulation parameter, as we manipulate the lens, will directly impact parameters like light leaks if we have link leak to lens parameter turned on. So basically, as the lens is manipulated and dragged around, it's going to directly impact the light leak. It's going to directly impact the vignette. Now, I don't believe it's impact. No, shake. Nope, nothing in shake. And let's just double check distortion. You'll see distortion, link distortion to lens. So this is what makes this effect very, very cool. The fact that really, if you think about it, if you get in, set the parameters the way you want them for those different uh, details like distortion, like light leak, like vignette, then you can get in and manipulate that lens and everything is going to be controlled by what you do with the lens, how you animate that lens, which makes this a very cool, very powerful and very unique effect. Now, I'm not a big fan of the very bright white light leak, so I'm just going to twirl down the light leak parameters. I'm just going to navigate down here, and let me just point out that the light leak parameter alone, look at how many individual parameters you can get in and adjust inside this one light leak details drop down. All right, there's just an absolute ton. And like I said, I want to get in and just change the colors up a bit. So let's start with yellow on the outside. We'll go to orange in the middle, and I'm just going to come to red as the center color, okay? That's looking a little, that's actually looking much nicer than it did before. Now, keep in mind, like I said, depending on how we set this up, we can have, I'm just gonna scroll up a little bit here, we can have the lens directly impact the light leak, or what we can do is turn that off and have the light leak impacted by what we put in in the parameters here. So for example, we can just crank the light leak intensity up here. I can have the size vary. There we go. Okay, we can even get in, adjust the hot spots. Now what's important to keep in mind is you'll notice that as I'm adjusting these parameters, no keyframes are being added unless I come in and actually grab the little on-screen widget here to come in and to start to create an animation by adding a keyframe. Now, where am I going with this? Well, where I'm going with this is we all know how to get in and keyframe inside of Media Composer, fairly straightforward. However, another new feature that I'm gonna talk about in just a second inside of Sapphire 2020 is integrated mocha tracking inside of a lot of effects inside of Sapphire 2020. So what I'm going to do is just bring your attention right up here to where we have the edit mocha parameter. Now, like I said, I'm going to talk about that specifically in the example of the lens flare effect inside of Sapphire. So keep that in the back of your head for now. But what I just want to, again, draw your attention to is just the absolute ton of parameters you can get in and adjust. For example, shake. You'll see we can drop that down, a ton of shake parameters. We can then come down, even add vignettes, which is just, to be honest, these are just an unbelievable amount of parameters to add to this shot to really take it to the next level. You can be as subtle or as crazy as you want like what I have here and get a different result every time. And keep in mind, for every different result you get, get in and save a preset inside the preset browser because this way you'll have them to go back to literally with the click of a mouse. Okay, so let's now move on. And what I want to do now is I want to talk about integrated mocha tracking across some of the effects inside of Sapphire. Now, what effects are included? Well, to get rolling, 10 effects include integrated mocha tracking, including lens flare, edge rays, rays, luna, grunge, spotlight, aurora, zap, muzzle flash, and of course, the one that we just talked about, free lens. 
Now in this example, what I want to do is I want to talk about the lens flare effect. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over to our Mocha Sapphire example here, and you'll see there's our Statue of Liberty. And what I've done is I've gotten in and I've locked in that lens flare by tracking it inside of Mocha. So how did I go about doing this? Well, let me show you. What I'm going to do is just double click on my sequence start here, and I'm just going to remove the effect. Very nice. And let's hit Command or Control in 8, and we're just going to type in Flare. And what we want to find here, there we go, is S Lens Flare, which is part of the Sapphire Lighting category. I'm just going to take it, drop it in there. Now, you'll notice right away, I, I always love the default Lens Flare just because it just looks so good. But what we want to do here is we want to simulate fire on top of the Statue of Liberty or a very bright, uh, almost like a, a, the light at the top of a lighthouse. So again, where am I going to go? I'm going to go to the preset browser. Why? Because there's the perfect preset in here for me to use exactly for this purpose. I'm just going to scroll down just a little bit here. Now, the one I was originally going to go with was this Canon one, but then I saw the California sun and I'm like, oh yeah, that's the light that's going to go at the top of the Statue of Liberty. So once I have it selected, I'm simply going to say load. Now, I'm not going to adjust any parameters right now. I'm only going to worry about the tracking. So let's bypass the effect. And what we're going to do is simply come down here and click on Edit Mocha. Now, I want to point out that right above Edit Mocha is the Edit Lens parameter, which will take us into the Flare Designer if you want to get in and take this flare and start altering it to really create the flare that you need to have. And keep in mind, once you start creating different flares, save them in that preset browser so you can come back to them at the click of a mouse. All right, so let's come in and say Edit Mocha. Now, one thing that I love about integrated Mocha inside of Continuum and Sapphire is just how user-friendly they've made it. I'm going to be honest, I know a lot of editor friends of mine are not the biggest fans of getting in and doing tracking inside of Media Composer, just because, to be honest, it's a lot of work and it never quite works out the way that you want it to work out. But using integrated Mocha tracking is probably the easiest thing that you could ever do. Now, right now I'm parked sort of in the middle of this shot. Now, I could go back to the beginning. To be honest, I'm not even going to worry about that. We're actually just going to start out exactly where we are right here. Now, for what we're doing right now, I'm only going to worry about tracking translation. I'm not going to worry about rotation or scale or anything like that. So I'm going to disable rotation. I'm going to disable scale. And we're going to take our search area. You'll see the hotspot search area. And I'm going to take it right up here. Now, to be honest, that's a pretty big area. So let's just hold shift and shrink this right down. Now, if you're new to Sapphire and you're new to Mocha, what's important to keep in mind is that there's two shortcuts inside of integrated Mocha or really any of the versions of Mocha that you'll be using. And these two are ones you're going to want to remember, Z and X. Z for zoom, X for pan. So if I hold Z down and I click on the screen, and I start zooming in, you'll see that I can zoom in and out based on where I actually have the mouse click. So now I can pan over like such. And again, if I want to zoom in on the actual torch, I can just click where the torch is and zoom in directly there. Now I'm just going to move this window right over here to focus on the actual torch itself. Now, based on what's going on in the shot, you might need to uh, have Mocha search a lot of pixels as it's going or analyze a lot of pixels as it's doing the track. Now, to be honest, the torch is over the gray sky, so I don't really need to worry too much about that here. And 50%, I think, is a good place to start. But if we wanted to get in and bump that up, we could put in a value all the way up to 100. Now, keep in mind, the speed of your track will be impacted based on the percentage of pixels that you are using. Now, again, like I said before, I'm not even going to worry about the fact that I'm not at the start of the shot. All I'm going to do is simply come in here and click track forward. Now, you'll see that it immediately starts tracking forward. And this looks pretty darn locked in there. I got to be honest with you. There's really doesn't look like there's too much that I'm going to have to get in and adjust once this is done. Now, if we need to track the other way, no problem. All I'm going to do is simply come right back here and I'm going to click track backwards. Now, I want to point out that I haven't sped anything up here. This is actually tracking in real time as I'm talking. So you can see, super fast, super responsive. I really didn't adjust any parameters. I just selected what I wanted to track, and I said start going. Now, what we have tracked is the search area, but I haven't actually assigned where the flare is going to go. So how do we get in and do this? 
I'm just going to jump down to about the midway point. I'm going to hold Z on the keyboard. I'm just going to zoom back a little bit here. And you're going to notice that we have two other parameters here. We have one for the hotspot, and we have one for the pivot. Now, based on which one I select, you're going to notice that two things become highlighted. One is the hotspot search area, and the other is the actual hotspot itself. You'll notice again for the pivot the exact same thing. I can put the, point of the, the center point of the pivot over here. So with that being said, with the hotspot search area, if this is the center point of the hotspot, I'm going to want to put it roughly where we're going to want it to go. I'm just going to zoom in here, and I'm going to place it pretty much where that torch is. Now what I'm going to do is just come back and hit play and take a look at how locked in that is. That's pretty darn locked in there. So all I'm going to do now is simply close Mocha Sapphire. I'm going to say save and check out what happens. When I turn off bypass, nothing. The lens flare is still right dead in the middle of the screen. So what exactly is going on here? Well, let me show you. I haven't actually gone in and told the lens flare effect that I want to use that Mocha information which is actually right down here in the hotspot. We were manipulating the hotspot, so let's get down here and tell Sapphire that we want it to use the Mocha information. And as soon as I click go, boom, it's locked in. Now keep in mind, that's obviously fairly bright. So what I can do is I can come in and we can actually just adjust that lens flare to bring it right down to about there, I think. And once we've done that, all I'm going to do is basically just step out of effects mode. I'm going to come back, I'm going to hit play, and you can see that this is more or less playing back in real time here. That's Mocha Tracked, nothing rendered. We got that lens flare locked in there, so it actually looks like the top of the Statue of Liberty's torch is actually on fire. All right. Now, those are two of the biggest new additions to Sapphire 2020, but that's not all. Sapphire 2020 also adds support for open color I.O. Now, what does that mean for you as a media composer editor? Well, what's important to keep in mind is that most of the color management in your workflow is done by media composer. But working in other applications, you may need to get in and tell Sapphire what color space you're working in and what color space you're going to. So having that flexibility inside of Sapphire now is super, super helpful. Also, there is 16 new lens flare presets as well as 7 new builder presets and there's a compare mode now inside of the preset browser. And last but certainly not least, we now have even faster renders inside of Sapphire with up to 3 times faster renders for specific effects. All right, now as we're wrapping up, I want to remind you to check out our sponsors, Video Guys, for all of your Avid software and hardware, as well as thousands of other products that you can check out over at videoguys.com. And I also want to give a big shout out to the team at Boris Effects, makers of Continuum, Sapphire, and Mocha. And don't forget to use that coupon code of MC101 to get 10% off your next Continuum purchase. And I want to round out this lesson by letting you know that the awesome team at Assimilate has given you a coupon code for 10% off a of Scratch, Scratch VR, or Play Pro Annual licenses using the coupon code of KPM Deal for you. If you like this tutorial, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And don't forget, if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, don't hesitate to send them to me at Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail. Dot com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.